Welcome to Inform TV. I'm Alan Repke, Alexandria, Minnesota. Today we're going to talk about the need for unions in uh, uh, outstate Minnesota in rural uh, areas uh, across the country. When we look at pay scales and uh, opportunities, we have uh, uh, farmers today with a balance sheet that ba basically everything's paid for, yet the taxpayer is still paying 60% uh, of their crop insurance premiums. And when we look at USDA figures, for example, from the farm end, we see $11 an hour, uh, uh, the average wage of farm workers, yet uh, agriculture the last uh, three years has boomed. We look at uh, uh, corporate business in, in uh, rural America where uh, most of the facilities today are paid for, they're getting incredible tax breaks, and uh, I see the, the need for unions. I, I work on uh, the weekend at Donnelly Manufacturing here in town. Alexandria has become quite a manufacturing hub in Minnesota, and uh, yet Alexandria tends to be a $10, $11 an hour town. And with the cost of living, I think all workers, not just in the Alexandria Lakes area, but our audiences in Duluth, Rochester, Marshall, Wilmer, uh, Brainerd, we all as uh, common workers should be looking about of what our workers doing to negotiate a contract rather than just taking what management gives them. And, and the falsehood that uh, if they do that, they have a more secure future than if they sit down annually or biannually and negotiate a contract. And to address some of those issues for workers in outstate Minnesota, uh, I've invited Joni here from the CLA. Uh, Joni, can you introduce yourself to the audience of Inform TV and workers around the state? Hello, I'm Joni Tulinchek. I'm the national rep for CLA USA, which is an independent union. And it stands for Christian Labor Association? Yes, sir. One, one of the reasons I, I brought uh, Joni in today is the fact that uh, uh, we have this uh, bias in rural America of uh, labor is unions are not a good thing, yet uh, when we look at pay scales and, and cost of living, uh, I think people of rural America, whether you consider yourself a conservative, liberal, or independent, uh, need to look at uh, what labor uh, unions can or can't do for you. And I invited Joni in from the Christian labor standpoint. What, just give us a little idea what Christian labor compares to say if I had invited in the plastic workers of America to, to uh, talk to the Donnelly workers and to show people statewide what unions can do. Sure. Um, CLA is an independent union, like I said. We are not affiliated with any international unions, um, which means we come into the community and we look at what sustainable wages are for that area, the safety working conditions. Um, we don't do blanket contracts. We do a contract for each signatory. We look at the group that we're working with and what their needs are, what they are to protect, what the wages are, what the hourly rates are. Um, simply a union is strength in numbers. That is one of the biggest assets that a union has over an individual at will employee. Now my fellow Donnelly uh, workers, I work uh, um, on the, the weekend and we have some issues of of, and I hear it coming up, uh, uh, you work for 36, but you get paid for 40 on the weekend. And the thing that I, uh, I hear from my fellow workers and people around the state is, what protection do we have today? Uh, obviously, when we look at statistics, uh, labor union uh, representation has come down dramatically other than public uh, employees. Public what, what kind of protection do we have? Are workers losing protection for, in a state and federal basis? Or uh, for my fellow Donnelly workers and, and workers around the state that are saying, we're not keeping up with management pay and the sales staff pay, uh, what do you say to that? What protections do uh, my Donnelly workers have or workers around the state? If you have the union, you like I said, you have the strength in numbers, you have the negotiation of the contracts, which worries about the shift differentials, the pay, the uh, different areas of safety, um, the different wages that are comparable to give you a sustainable life in the community that you live in. Okay. Uh, no matter where we are, 
what is the process that needs to take place to unionize a group, say the Donnelly workers uh, or a group in Rochester or Marshall? What, what's the first status or what's the first steps that you would help a, a worker like myself who come together and say, hey, I think uh, my fellow workers, we would like to start negotiating a contract. What do you do in that process? Start with the beginning. The simplest, the beginning would be meeting, just meeting with a group, uh, meeting with any of the workers to explain what the union is all about, explain what benefits the CLA can do for you as a group, um, as an individual, as a group. Um, we start with a small core group, then what we have to do is we have a vote, a ballot, we have to have 30% of the workers um, have to agree that they would like the union to come in, and then we have to go through the NLRB, which is the National Re Labor Relations Board, um, and they have to oversee the process of the negotiations for becoming a union within that employer. What's, what's the cost that uh, just in the starting process that uh, workers uh, would have to look at? Zero. There is zero cost for the union coming in to help them out. So from, from a, you, you say that uh, you forego any cost as far as what about uh, renting a room uh, for people to come in? Does uh, your union pick that up in the uh, original stage? In the organizational stage, yes, we absolutely do. What, what uh, as the process going on, let's say the Donnelly workers say that the, we get 40 or 50 percent of the people, yeah, let's, let, let's start negotiating a contract. Um, what traditionally will be their cost per hour or percentage of their pay to be unionized? People are wondering about that today. Um, there is initially, to get, once you have to go through the NLRB, you have to have 50% of the workers to become, um, that the employer has to recognize you and then you become recognized and then you can go into contract negotiations with the employer. At that time, there is initiation fees, however, when it's a new group, we always waive the initial initiation initiation fee which is a hundred dollars for people coming in later and in Minnesota we have several we have three different locals too so it depends on which local you may fit into within that so it's just the union dues um, there's no work assessments or anything like that is just the yearly dues you know workers are uh, um, concerned about their company surviving you guys come in and you tend to look at uh, uh, the balance sheet the best you can as far as finding out what the, the debt the business has and and that type of thing is that that yeah. correct yes it is we are an interest-based um, union and what we look at is we look at what the employer what the market can bear what the employers spreadsheets say what they have um, for income debt um, ratio we don't want to go against the employer, we want to work with the employer because without the employer, the employee has no job. So we have to work in unison, work together. Now, in the case of Donnelly Manufacturing, it's a, it's a small uh, ownership group, Stan Donnelly, uh, uh, Ron Kirsch, and I don't know what of some of the other management people. Do you have access to look at their balance sheet under state or federal law or not? Under state law, there are certain places and things that we can investigate into, look into um, while we're organizing, yes. Okay, and uh, Follow through then a little more as far as first uh, uh, the worker would have to sit down with a small group, uh, say if it were the Eagles or wherever we find a room, uh, you would invite uh, I as uh, instigator here, uh, how would I go about telling my, my fellow Donnelly workers that, hey, you should come in and listen to uh, uh, the Christian Labor Association, uh, uh, and I'm doing that because I think uh, you guys have a record uh, of being fair, uh, not a strong arm group, and, I, and the people I work with, I respect them, uh, and uh, try to get to understand that uh, uh, business today, and in, in case of Alexandria, they got a business round table, they got a Chamber of Commerce, uh, they got a Broadway business group, that they're all organization, uh, organized groups to, to see that they strengthen the business community or their bottom line. Our farmers have the corn growers, the Farm Bureau, they're all groups and, and uh, my message here today to workers around the state, all these businesses that tend to bash unions have all unionized themselves. 
and and they've used uh, uh, government to strengthen. Now explain that a little bit about as far as the uh, Christian labor group. What about your political affiliation? What about your church affiliation? I think that would be a, a question people sure. would have. And that going, yeah, our Christian, um, it's Christian Labor's Association, and what Christian means is it means we're value-based. We take Christian principles, which is integrity and respect, and that is two of our key things. As far as political uh, affiliation, we have none. We put zero dollars into lobbyists. Um, we believe that everyone has their right to who they want to vote for, who they want to elect. Do you have a political action pact in the union? No, we do not. Okay, and uh, because I think people are concerned about, about that, uh, as far as what, what is organized labor today? Uh, now, I have did a program here uh, showing that the hourly wage uh, of, of, uh, of Douglas County workers from the county nurse to the sheriff's department to uh, clerical people average about twenty-five fifty an hour. Um, and w what do unions nationwide or your statewide, how much better are union organized workers than the average? Um, across the nation, it's 27% um, if you are represented by a union, higher wages than someone that is non-represented by a union. Okay. Here in the state of Minnesota, any, anything different? And, and your group here in Minnesota, wh what type of workers do you tend to represent? Um, we have different ones from highway construction to HVACs, heating and air conditioning, to nurses, retail, um, electricians, all different entities that we, and we have the, within the three different locals, we can encompass and bring in any group, and that is the diversity of the CLA. How, how large is your biggest group in Minnesota, and how small is your smallest group? Smallest group is three, and our largest group is about 250. Okay, because uh, in a previous program here, we talked about now where we have the License Bureau in Douglas County. There are just six workers there. They've been negotiating now, I think, for like uh, almost two months and still haven't uh, come to a conclusion. So when we look at Donnelly Manufacturing or some of the other um, manufacturing groups in the Alexandria Lakes area around the state, um, there's there's a big volume of, of people that uh, uh, I firmly believe need uh, your services and uh, um, uh, so but from a standpoint as we round down on time on this first segment at least and talking about um, the rights of workers uh, yeah, for myself bring it in or say we the first meeting we only get 12 people can I be fired or can I be get all the dirty jobs because I bring you in? What protection do that first group of workers have? That is called, it's under the National Labor Relations Act that they cannot uh, discriminate against, they cannot um, fire you, they cannot do anything. That is part of the rights of joining a union. Um, what at that first group is an informational meeting. We explain more. We ask answer questions. It's a big question and answer. It's not me getting up and lecturing. It's sitting down and asking what are what are your needs? What are you looking at in your area? Because like I said, we are an independent, so each contract is specifically for that group. So I have to do a lot of listening too to see really what your group needs. It, is it strictly? Uh Hourly wage uh, earners, obviously that's the ones I think need to be represented, but it could management come in and sit down at that meeting too? Uh, or can you say, hey, Ron, uh, uh, Darla, Sam, Dave, we don't want you in there, uh, the management group. They can absolutely come in in the initial organization to listen to what we're going into. When we get into um, balloting and to really getting into the nuts and bolts of things, of course, the management would not be involved. In okay, because I, I think those are things that people around the state need to think about. And uh, um, the, for example, the group I'm with, uh, their starting pay, uh, they just bumped it from uh, uh, I think it was eight seventy. We all got a thirty cent an hour increase to nine dollars. My own wage, my base, I think is ten oh five, and and with my shift in, uh, differential, I think I'm like eleven fifty six. And and I want the people of the community to understand uh, eleven dollars an hour is twenty two thousand dollars a year. So uh, and that's pretty common wage in that group, and uh, or twelve dollars an hour and twenty four thousand dollars. So. I think uh, we're talking real, if we're going to strengthen our communities, we have to see that everybody is enjoying the American dream. 
Uh, Joni, we want to thank you for this segment and we'll see if we do a second one here, but I want to touch the bases for the workers in the Alexandria area. Thanks for listening to this uh, portion of... Uh Welcome back to uh, Inform TV, the segment we're doing on the need for unions. Uh, uh, we're going to tie in now about seven days later of what uh, uh, we talked about on uh, 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 May 30th relating to organizing Donnelly workers in the Alexandria uh, Lakes area, but at the same time talking to labor uh, and workers statewide and people in their community and their churches that are concerned uh, about the workforce in the area, concerned about the fact that the politicians and uh, the pundits on TV continue to talk about how wage rates and earnings and income get up, up, up and away uh, for business owners, farmer owners, big corporations, executives, um, public employees in relationship to the common workforce. The 40% that put in their time and their energies and their knowledge on a daily basis put in 40 hours a week, but uh, the system from the political system to the churches to the communities just plain has lost touch with them just as forgot about them uh, and I blame a big part of it on education Minnesota etc around the country that uh, uh, unless you have this fantastic degree you're just a peon do what we tell you and keep your darn mouth shut and and work 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 do more overtime uh, live a lower standard of living and uh, uh, hopefully your kids will go on to school and and become a boss and then they can dominate uh, um, the people in the community likes going on right now so obviously uh, this is a no-brainer it's time the numbers show we have to do something about the labor force in the state of Minnesota in the upper Midwest where we have a, a market or even nationwide it it has to be more than talk so and that's why we're talking about bringing the Donnelly workers uh, a union in it's a no-brainer for them to just they should be just saying hey Repke they all know me there Repke where do I sign let's call for a vote let's get organized let the the, uh, the Christian Labor Association with the people uh, in the Donnelly workforce that uh, their fellow workers respect and let's negotiate a decent contract and let's get away from this dog dish employee thing where everybody waits around till somebody throws something in your dish and if you growl enough you get a little more but otherwise you're a dog dish employee and and I'm including myself as dog dish employee and I look around the area I look around the state look uh, around uh, uh, the workforce has become dog dish people. It's like we're not educated, we no longer have a brain. But anyway, you know I'm upset about this thing and we have to do something both as a concerned citizen, as a Christian in the community, and a person who's been involved in business for a lifetime, been on six continents. I personally threw down the Green Giant back in 1973, I believe it was. You people in Mankato can uh, have the 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 Mankato Free Press look up the article uh, about how we organized the largest uh, pea and sweet corn processing plant in Glencoe, Minnesota at the time and I think it maybe still is, I'm not sure, but we did it as farmers. I mean you talk about herding cats, organizing farmers and saw that they got a good price for their peas and sweet corn. In fact, my ghost is still in that uh, uh, whole industry. And uh, uh, yet at the same time, uh, one green giant decided to sell their plants. And even after they had stamped on my throat uh, because I had made things uh, good and everybody wanted in, yet my prophecy about the contract that I told them was extremely speculative. That in fact, the growers that said, well, you don't know what you're talking about, two or three years later actually wrote Green Giant a check to uh, uh, raise a crop for him and 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 then after that Green Giant come to me and said hey Repke you want to buy the plant by then I was fed up with the whole group my my uh, neighbors and friends so to speak but the reality life goes on and uh, I focused on the seed business on the sugar industry uh, on my farming operation and trying to be a good citizen of understanding unless people speak up they just get uh, pounded into the ground and taken advantage of and, and the labor force today 
is a prime example of that. Now, at the same time, I've only got 10 minutes left here. Uh, here's the boilerplate for everybody. Uh, and it's not just for people in Alexandria Lakes area, you people in, in Duluth, Rochester, Marshall, Wilmer, uh, Brainerd, uh, the Fargo-Moorhead area. Uh, I've set up, with the help of the Christian Labor Association, uh, on June 20th, so mark this down, or if you know anybody that uh, uh, works at Donnelly Manufacturing here in the Alexandria Lakes area, call them and say, you should be at this meeting, or tell them better yet, you better guys better get organized and get, quit complaining about your, your poor salaries and take a fair sh uh, piece of the pie. That's all I'm asking of them. But on June 20th, I've set up, there's going to be three meetings at Fat Daddy's Restaurant, a, a working man's bar, bowling league, uh, uh, alley, um, ballroom there, and uh, I've set up we're going to have three meetings. And the first meeting is for the churches of the community uh, and around the state actually, and workers around the state as well as Donnelly employees if they want to come in at that. But I've set up two meetings particularly for the various shifts at Donnelly Manufacturing, a one o'clock meeting at Fat Daddy's as well as a four o'clock meeting at Fat Daddy's on June 20th so they can come in and talk and uh, have their questions answered by the, the Christian Labor Association and get this thing organized so they for once negotiate a contract rather than just take uh, what the, is thrown uh, at them. And, uh, uh, when I look statewide at this thing, this June 20th, and I want the, uh, anybody around the state or in the churches uh, to talk to workers that you've had in your church or in your community, people struggling with their home, yet you know their wages haven't changed, why don't you tell them, get in the car and come up to Alexandria on uh, uh, the 20th of June and go to Informed TV, Informed tv.com and there's an email address my email address is there tell me you're going to come we're going to probably have a little luncheon afterwards uh, uh, after the union gets a chance to speak i may invite some uh, some uh, leaders that are not running for office but at the same time i invite all parties running for elected official whether you're a county commissioner state legislature uh, a congressman senator uh, but i'm going to try to keep it to the point where if any public leaders talk i'm going to try to see that they're not running for election so when you people uh, come to that 11 o'clock meeting the general public uh, or people outside of the area or people that don't work for Donnelly Manufacturing, you get a chance to um, hear what the opportunities are for you in Rochester. And I give a special uh, invite to Walmart workers. Why do Walmart workers, all of a sudden the Walmart stock is trading and most Donnelly workers, uh, you go there any um, uh, payday, we get paid every two weeks, everybody goes to the Walmart, my bank is the Walmart card, uh, and a lot of my Donnelly workers, a lot of low income uh, workers in the state, Donnelly, our, our uh, Walmart is not only their bank uh, uh, and their place uh, to, to buy things, um, we all know people that work at Walmarts around the state of Minnesota. And, and I think it's time those people wake up to the fact too, the Walton family, Walmart itself, suddenly their stock is taking off. Uh, they have a market cap now. Uh, I believe it is 200 and, uh, 33 million, 234 million uh, today, this uh, uh, June 4th. And here, the Walton kids, or Walton family members, own between 47 and 48 percent of the stock. Doesn't that mean Walmart workers, your employer, your main employer that has the main uh, uh, input into the, the uh, organization, just with their Walmart stock, they're worth over 100 billion dollars. To me, as a Christian concerned citizen, that means 
you're just like the Donnelly workers. You should be getting more money than you're getting. You're providing incredible service and product uh, uh, for the, the people in the informed TV listening area. And I clearly believe you should be there. And yet at the same time, I want to quickly talk about the Christian principles of the Christian labor force. I thought, well, what are Christian principles? And now you can Google them, and I did that, and I go, oh my goodness, we're getting into the realm of religion. And I want all workers here. I didn't bring them in from any religious standpoint, yet my first and foremost in the family I was raised in, in my life of 62 years, I've always tried to live and work under the principles of the Christian faith. And I believe our country was founded under the principles of the Christian faith. Yet I, like our forefathers, believe in separation of uh, church and state. And I, you don't have to be anybody involved in a church or anything like this, but I think it addresses the fact that people are concerned uh, about labor unions, but here we're just bringing in a group that will help Donnelly workers or Walmart workers or any workers in the Alexandria Lakes area or around the state start negotiating a contract and don't be a dog dish employee uh, of companies and farms that are making big money. Just get a reasonable piece of the pie. That's what I'm telling you and that's what this meeting on June 20th at Fat Daddy's Restaurant, um, Bowling Alley and Bar, uh, uh, Ballroom, is all about and uh, uh, so at the same point in time when I talk about the Christian Labor Union uh, Labor Association myself I'm furious about my ELCA Lutheran Church and their lack of responsibility in fact all the Christian churches in the Alexandria Lakes area, whether it's the Big Covenant Church, Zion Luther, the Catholic Church in town, or, or many of the non-denominational uh, churches in the area, why aren't you standing up for common workers? Uh, when you look at what businesses got under uh, this meltdown economy we had in 2008, the tax breaks and that kind of thing, here we've got people losing their homes, being thrown out in the street, and our churches have turned a blind eye to it. I say in my ELCA Lutheran Church, we got now we got Pope Mark Hansen and his 65 clerics disguised as bishops, and our pastors and these bishops have become servants of academia and social movement and their position of bringing the gay and lesbian community into the pulpit, into our Bible camps, um, without thinking of the ramifications for the, our kids and our next generation of kids, I think it is outrageous. So any of you Donnelly workers or workers out there think I'm bringing in for a church scam, it's anything but that. It's good old common sense American economics where workers need a fair sh uh, uh, piece of the pie. Yet I truly invite all my ELC members statewide to, or any of the, uh, the community organizations, I'll treat you like a saint. I'm, I'm venting my frustration right now, but I'm trying to see that the common workers in the state of Minnesota start being treated well by businesses such as Donnelly, such as Walmart, that are incredibly profitable and have just left the bottom 40% of our population struggling while government has bailed out all these big organizations, banks, speculators, and that type of thing. Any of you people that have listened to um, Inform TV in the past. So, uh, uh, the meeting on June 20th has three dates. At 11 o'clock, it's for the general public and the churches and the community groups. You email me uh, at Inform TV if you want to stay for lunch or just stay for lunch on your own. Fat Daddies will gladly take care of you. But if there happens to be a bigger group uh, when this is all talked about in the bars and the churches uh, around the state of Minnesota and in North Dakota, uh, Maybe we'll have enough crowd that it's only fair to the, uh, the fine folks at Fat Daddies who have no position on anything I say here, but are good working people. Uh, I have a little heads up and, and go to Inform TV or al at informtv.com. Just al at informtv.com. 
send me an email, yeah, I want to stay for lunch, I want to talk to the churches, I want to talk to the people in your area or some of the people I bring along. Uh, we got to eat anyway, let's eat at Fat Daddy's on the 20th of June. And the Donnelly workers, you can come in at one o'clock uh, and we'll have a special room for you to keep the general public out of that or at four o'clock or just bump me at work and say, where's the piece of paper? Let's get organized. Thanks for listening to Inform TV. I'm Alan Rep.